Martin, what a year. So much has happened in 2021. So let's bring in Bruce Gordon because he's always a good person to bring in on these subjects, one of our senior reporters, to make a wrap up of this year. Good morning to you. Good morning, Karen. All right, let's start off with the reversal on Cosby because that was a shocker. Most of us came out of nowhere, it seemed. Yeah, essentially, the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court ruled that Bill Cosby did not get a fair trial. What they meant by that was, you'll recall, that he had made an agreement, essentially, with the former district attorney in Montgomery County, Bruce Castor. Castor saying, we will not criminally prosecute you. Once he made that determination, that freed Cosby then to give a deposition in a civil case. This is all dealing with that Andrea Constand uh, incident at his home back in 2004. The court basically said Cosby relied on the caster promise of no criminal prosecution before giving that deposition. Later, of course, Cosby is charged criminally. That deposition is used against Cosby in trial. And of course, he was convicted in a second trial. The court basically saying this was not just a technicality. This was an unfair trial of Will Cosby. He was released from prison and will not be retried. A huge decision, but remember, for lovers of, shall we call it, street justice, Cosby had already done almost all three years of what would have been a three to ten year sentence. So it's not as if he got off with no jail time served at all, but he did spend almost three years in prison. That case is now over. A stunning decision that had us all talking back when it came up. It's also interesting, Bruce, about that case is that they really didn't address the facts, the guilt or innocence of the case. They addressed the structure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, Bill. Look, this was very clear. The judges in the, on the high court of the state of Pennsylvania were not saying this was an innocent man. They were saying that his trial was unfair because he relied, whether the deal was legit or not with Castor, he relied on that promise of no criminal prosecution before giving the deposition that was later used against him. There was absolutely no claim, despite what you will hear and have heard from Cosby's spokespeople, uh, that this means he's an innocent man. Not at all. This means the trial itself was unfair, thus he is released. Another big, big name, of course, in Philadelphia, our labor leader, IBEW, Johnny Dougherty, and of course, uh, Bobby Heenan, one of the other uh, council members who also work for IBEW, a uh, high profile trial, and they get convicted. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, the sentencing for those uh, two cases uh, will come in February, and we'll be looking forward to seeing just what happens at that point. It would not shock me to see at least several years in prison for each of them. Look, the jury in this federal case basically said that John Doherty bought himself a city councilman in Bobby Heenan, basically kept him on the IBEW payroll for a job that appeared to have really nothing involved in the job other than being at John Doherty's beck and call. When Doherty wanted legislation passed or stopped, he would call his man Bobby Heenan. There were dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, audio tapes from phone calls, wiretapped phone calls by the federal government used at that trial. And what they portrayed was the city council person who was doing the bidding of the labor leader. Heenan, of course, becomes just the latest in a long and rather disappointing list of city officials, elected officials in Philadelphia, who uh, ran afoul of the law, and now he'll be in prison for it. Bruce, maybe the biggest stories, stories of the year, unfortunately, all of this violence, gun violence, yeah. heading into a new year, trying to fix it. Your thoughts on where we stand? Look, I, I wish I had some good news to report on this, but as we've seen throughout the year, uh, that does not appear to be forthcoming. Look, we've got a city in which the programs designed to keep young people active and involved in something productive are, in the best of times, not very well monitored to see if they're working. The pandemic has thrown those programs into disarray. We've got an understaffed police department that the statistics show is making fewer arrests, at least on murder cases, and a prosecutor's office, a district attorney's office, that has its own dysfunction, reporting by the Inquirer showing significant turnover within that office, leaving them less experienced and in some cases less prepared to prosecute cases. It's a recipe for disaster, and that's exactly what we've seen. I have to believe the pandemic is largely, though who knows how, what percentage we're talking about here, but largely responsible. Remember, this has been a coming upheaval of how we live our lives, how we interact with one another. We can only hope that as the pandemic subsides, maybe this murder and mayhem subsides with it. But in the meantime, it's been a terrible time out there in the streets of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and frankly, in cities around the country. Yes. Those pointing their fingers specifically at the Philly police or at DA Larry Krasner, remember, this is a phenomenon going on across the country. 
And a lot of it, you know, the kids aren't in school. We've got all of these kids out there. These crimes, card, you know, the 13, 14, yeah. you know, get the kids back in school, structure, structure, structure. Bruce, thank yeah. you. And Always have a, appreciate your insight. Have a happy New Year. Thanks. And you as well.